Transferring wealth successfully starts with asking yourself questions that will give your family a better life now and for generations to come. In this podcast, financial professionals John and Michael from Copper Beach Financial Group guide you through eye-opening questions to help you discover the truth about your wealth. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to The Truth About Wealth with John and Michael Parise of Copper Beach Financial Group. Michael is back running the show today. He's brought a return guest. Mr. Isaac Downing is on the show again. So listeners, if you have not heard the first podcast, go back and listen to that because I believe that that really set a good foundation for what we're going to be talking about today or what Michael and, and Isaac are going to be talking about today. And Michael, as, as we ended that last recording, you were like, you know what? I wanted to ask a specific question and you're going to start off with that question today day, right? I will. Well, first off, thanks again, Isaac, for for being a guest here. I think to echo your last statement, Eric, if you haven't listened to part one, go back and listen to part one, because that's really going to give a good foundation for what we're going to talk about in this second part here. Uh, So Isaac, thank you so much again for being here. Always a pleasure, Michael. Thank you for having me um, on the show again here today. Excellent. So so yeah, so this this question that I probably should have asked in the last episode, and I know obviously every uh, investor's tax situation is different, and you certainly need to consult your CPA with on your own personal situation. But the one question that I had for you as it relates to how this cost segregation study uh, could fit in terms of tax um, benefits, is there any difference or can this study be used if you are a passive real estate owner or an active real estate owner, only because sometimes that does come up either in our conversations with CPAs or real estate investors is is they're either actively participating or passively participating. But can you give a little bit of high level information on how that might apply? Yeah, Michael, absolutely. So like we said earlier here in the last podcast here, cost segregation can be done on any type of property here, whether you be a passive real estate investor or you know, an active in, in the actual real estate market, we really want to take advantage of the study while we can. You know, I see a lot of passive real estate owners, you know, that have other type of businesses, whether they're doctors, whether they trade on the stock market, um, they really understand this type of studies and take advantage of while we can. For instance, I'll give you an example. I had a client that made a lot of money in the stock market. He was looking for ways to offset his taxable liability. He would then went and purchased some some uh, multifamily unit properties. We did a commercial. We did a cost segregation study on those properties that accelerated depreciation that he received through a cost segregation study. Then offsetted his money that he made his taxable liability that he did from the actual stock market. So, you know, absolutely, we want to look at these studies for not only for passive income but for active real estate investors or even even your mom and pop that have a couple properties, you know, these, these type of studies are something that could be definitely beneficial for them. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a huge benefit. And uh, of course, obviously on top of just the tax savings, you're, you're having the real estate asset as well as a part of your portfolio, which, which over time, you know, will will just add additional benefits to the family. wealth. so that's, that's a fantastic story, which leads into what I really wanted to focus on in the second piece, which is maybe given a little bit more case studies on some of the work that your firm has done with these cost segregation studies and the benefit that that's given to some real estate owners. So uh, can I throw that back to you and maybe give some of your, some of your highlights that you've worked on or your firm's worked on? Yeah, absolutely. These are always really exciting because like we talked about, Michael, you know, you can do a cost segregation study on anything from a commercial real estate building to a sawmill, to a golf course, to a, you know, to a mobile home park. And I've seen some really great beneficial studies and I can just kind of give you an example of a couple of them right now. Um, For instance, we had a client that had a hotel, you know, when you have these hotels or when you have any type of multifamily unit property, nine times out of 10, you're going to be doing some renovations, whether it be new construction, whether it be um, updating the carpeting, the flooring, you really want to take some notes on these actual properties and what you did these works because you can accelerate that depreciation in order to offset your taxable liability. I had a client that had a 300 room, I'd say boutique hotel with a restaurant and bar. Now restaurants and bars are great candidates for a cost segregation study because there's a lot of specialty plumbing. There's there's different components in that restaurant that are able to accelerate and take that bonus depreciation. 
So they had a, a new construction. I think they went ahead and built the building for roughly around $50 million. And like we're talking about, it's a new construction of a hotel. You know, with the first year tax savings, we're able to get them about $4.5 million, about $5 million of accelerated depreciation on a $50 million property. Now, that is a tremendous amount of savings they're able to see. What our engineers did is they go out and, and segregate each specific assets. They moved 20% roughly into five year, which is uh, we're talking about the carpeting. We're talking about uh, different specialty plumbing components that goes in the restaurant. Um, the different fixtures that were going in the hotel. These are the items that you can go ahead and take at a shorter asset life. Um, we then went outside and we looked at the different pools that they had, the sprawling walkways, and that's where we are able to take 15% to 15 years. And that's when we're looking at a $50 million property and able to really accelerate close to $5 million of depreciation, that is a tremendous number there. So guys, and, and don't be... Don't think that just because this building was $50 million they can get that savings. You can utilize this on any type of property. This happens to be a boutique hotel, but like we said, you can do the same exact study on a multifamily unit property. You can use it on, a, if you had an office building, um, all types of buildings will qualify for this and able to really help you out and reduce your taxable liability. Yeah, I mean that's the again to reiterate what we talked about a little bit on the on the first episode here is that these studies are are so unique to the individual property and again depending on like in this example this being a restaurant and bar like you mentioned having specialty equipment within that within that restaurant and bar that's going to be a totally different study than somebody that does own you know that multifamily apartment building both still apply to look at these studies but it's going to be a little bit different in terms of how that study is conducted. And that's why I, I think, again, to reiterate what we said in the first episode, again, with your firm, there's really no upfront cost to be able to look at this and analyze your property that you might have. So that's where I think it really just does behoove everybody that has commercial real estate to at least explore this option with their CPAs or with your firm just to just to look at it. Again, if it doesn't apply or it doesn't make sense, that's one thing, but at least you have that data. Because uh, again, we've seen so many real estate investors that haven't ever heard of this, haven't looked at it before, and that just always, you know, makes us say, okay, we need we need to bring somebody in like Capstan to be able to see if this makes sense. Just because the benefits, as you just pointed out, Isaac, are, are huge. So it's de definitely everybody needs to look at this if you haven't already. Right. Absolutely. It's just, it is an amazing, powerful tool to really increase your cash flow and reduce your taxable liability. So, you know, if you're not taking advantage of this, you have to at least explore it. And, and you need to understand why you're not taking advantage of this because of where it is right now, because of bonus depreciation that's there. Um, it's like we said, like we talked about in the last podcast, bonus depreciation ends in 2022 starts dropping down by 20% up into 2026. So it is worth really taking advantage of, just take a look. I mean, like I said, it's these, these appraisals that we're going out there, these that estimate of benefits, it is free of charge. And if you don't need the taxable liability, that's great. But if you do want to free it from cash flow, maybe go out there and purchase another property or use that extra cash flow to go invest. You know, this is, this is an opportunity for yourself. Excellent. Uh, the one question I had, Isaac, and again, I, I know everybody's tax situation is different, but you know, we talk, we've had some guests on on this podcast that have talked a lot about uh, 1031 exchanges. And I'm interested to hear how or if this uh, cost segregation study could sort of work alongside a 1031 exchange. Is that something that your firm has seen? Absolutely, Michael. You know, you just touched base on one of the most powerful tools out there in the real estate market, 1031 exchanges on top of a cost segregation study. Now that, now that is a powerful tool right there. Now, yes, you can in short. So, you know, you have your 1031 exchange. Let's just say you purchased, uh, let's just say you sold the property for a million dollars. And if you're just doing some round numbers here, and you bought another property for $1.5 million. Now that step up in basis, that extra 500,000, that's when you can do a cost segregation study. So you can roll over that doing a 1031 exchange. And on top of that, do a cost segregation on a step up in basis. And now you're going to get that benefit from the cost segregation study and on top of that benefit that you received from a 1031 exchange. So it is an extremely powerful tool. 
And really, really understanding these type of tools is what's going to take your real estate investor up to the next level. You know, I'm, I'm always amazed when I'm seeing professionals out there in these real estate conferences that I go to that really understand these different tax laws because, you know, it takes them, you know, in order to get to that level, you have to really understand tax because the last thing you want to do, guys, is really go out and pay more taxes that you need to do. Um, you really need to understand these in order to really offset your taxable liability and free up that cash flow. Yeah, I mean that just that strategy alone, and you know, ten thirty one exchanges. If you've heard our prior podcast on ten thirty one exchanges, you know those in and of themselves have tremendous benefit, but they are complicated. There's very strict requirements that have to be met in order to facilitate that. And so, if you can couple that with like a cost segregation study that we're talking about here, that's that could be a huge benefit. But I again, I think it just reinforces even further the need to work with qualified experts in both of those arenas just to make sure that you are working with people that understand the tax laws, like you said, Isaac, because the benefits can be fairly substantial, but you of course need to do it properly and and follow the guidelines and and the rules as they exist. So I mean that 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 sort you sort of made my day there with that. Thanks for giving me that because I think that that is, you know, ten thirty one exchanges are such a powerful tool. And by the way, also another area that we have seen, unfortunately, certain real estate investors that for whatever reason have been told by other advisors that maybe doesn't apply to them for one reason or another. And so now you couple that again with this cost segregation study, you can really add a tremendous amount of value. Tremendous. Yeah, it, it's tough. And, you know, Michael, like we talked about, it is so complex, these two type of uh, studies that we're talking about. 1031 is, is an extremely complex um, tool, but it, it is powerful, especially when um, combined here with the cost segregation study. So it is extremely important to talk with your CPA, talk with your, you know, your financial advisor to really understand your needs and really make sure you're making the right decision for yourself. But it's always worth taking a look and exploring. You know, we don't want to leave any money on the table like we talked about earlier. So, absolutely. All right. So, if I can, if I could pick your brain a little further, Isaac, and get back to maybe some case studies. Do you have a, a case study regarding where cost segregation was implemented with maybe, let's say, some sort of um, improvement to an existing building? As I know we talked about last podcast on your ability to not just use these studies at the property acquisition, like the first example you gave, but even on existing properties. Do you have any case studies where that might illustrate how that would work? Yeah, absolutely. I can give you an example here. We have um, a client that has a lot of uh, assisted living facilities. Now, when you look at assisted living facilities, you have a lot of things like chair rails. Some of the assisted livings will have uh, kitchens in them. A lot of specialty equipment that you, that you that they utilize there. So, you know, we, we can do a cost segregation study on the acquisition itself. But like we talked about a little earlier, nine times out of 10, you're going to have to do some renovations on there. You're going to have to really update that carpeting, update the lighting, uh, maybe update the kitchen area, the different types of rooms you had in the system lane facility. And that's what they did. They ended up going out there and doing another $500,000 of actual work here on the actual property themselves. But what we did is we go ahead and accelerate that depreciation. We're able to save them about close to $200,000 of first year tax savings. So we're talking about $200,000 on a $500,000 improvement. So that is a significant amount of savings wow. you're able to do through one of these studies. You know, if, if your CPA is not advising you on this, you know, you really need to look at somebody, maybe go to a tax, uh, a cost segregation professional, because these estimates are definitely important, especially when we're talking about a $500,000 renovation, they're able to save you $200,000. So, you know, like we talked about earlier, it's always worth taking a look at and talking to professionals out there. Yeah, absolutely. Is there any benefit to, and I, I don't know the answer to this, if you're, if you're a tenant in a building, is there any benefits that a tenant can has? A lot of times you might have to do a fit out of a space if you're going to be leasing it. Is there any benefits that the tenant has with these cost segregation studies or does it all go to the property owner? It, it depends on that, Michael, but you're right. You know, tenants can get a great benefit when we're doing a cost segregation study. Now, it depends on who's actually keeping the access on their books. If it's going to be strictly the owners and the owners will, will take um, take advantage of the cost segregation study, 
But if the tenants themselves are paying the property and they're keeping those assets on their actual books, it does make sense to do a cost segregation study. You know, I see a lot of tenants that come into play. I'm going to give you an example right now. We had a tenant that came in, did a commercial office build out. I believe there was another CPA firm that went out there and did that. Um, they did a roughly around uh, $850,000. What they're doing is they're building out different private rooms, conferences, uh, maybe some entry lobby areas out there. But we want to really think about when you're doing these tenant improvements, you can take advantage of QIP, which is qualified improvement property. That is another subject in itself. But I can give you an example of what they, what we kind of able to receive. So by going out there and building these cubicle areas, these conference rooms, these lobby areas, you know, our engineers go out there and visit the property. They do their valuation. They do their cost segregation study. They're going out there and valuing out these lighting components, these different specialty electrical items, able to move roughly around 30% into five year, which is that personal property. And then another close to about uh, 1% here, maybe uh, to that 15 year, because it is only internal. But, you know, through bonus depreciation, like we talked about in the last uh, podcast here, out of that $850,000, they are able to move around $340,000 into bonus depreciation. They're able to take advantage of it. Now, think about it, $850,000, but you get, you get able to get back $340,000. That is a tremendous amount of savings they're able to get. Yeah. So, you know, I see this all the time where a lot of different tenants are not keeping track of the tenant improvements, but it really is important to keep track of those just because if you can go get a cost segregation study, you're able to get free up that depreciation and really increase that cash flow. So powerful tool here. Yeah. I mean, that is, a, and that's not something that I was aware of. And that is, I think you're, again, you're educating me today, which is, which is great. And I, I hope you're educating our listeners as well. Cause that's something that again, if you're, a tenant in a proper in, in a building in your space, like you said, I think keep track of those tenant improvements because it may be a benefit to you and your business. Um, and that's that that's a huge benefit. Absolutely, excellent. So, any any other case studies, Isaac? That um, before we wrap up here, that you think our listeners might be interested in, in hearing about. You know, yeah, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, a lot of times I hear this, Isaac, could this be done on a small residential household? Absolutely, guys. It can be done on a, like we talked about, a New York skyscraper versus a small multifamily unit property that you may have in Indiana. These studies can definitely be beneficial. Um, I've seen um, apartment multifamily unit properties, you know, receive upwards of 35% of accelerated depreciation. Now, 35% is an extreme amount of, of, of depreciation you can go ahead and accelerate, especially when you're talking about a property that's, you know, over $800,000 or even a million dollars or even 35% of $100,000 is a lot of money. So, you know, when we're going out there, our engineers are doing these case studies and we're identifying things that you can't necessarily see from the naked eye, different water retention systems that go under the buildings where you want to go and accelerate. We're out there valuing the actual driveways. Um, the different specialty concrete that's out there. These are all specific items that need to be out there and measured and need to be out there and valued by an actual trained professionals. So guys, you know, we talked about earlier, keep account of all your improvements you're doing and always run it by a professional because we want to really take advantage of this while we can. Again, I harped up on it earlier that bonus depreciation ends in 2022, but that's okay. Still drops down 20%. We really want to look at your properties that you have whether that's a large commercial commercial office, whether that's an, a tenant improvement that it is, or even if you have some small multifamily unit properties, uh, definitely worth taking advantage and taking a look at. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just to reiterate, that the, again, having these studies done, whether or not it fits for your situation is one thing, but again, getting the study done or at least the initial analysis done to just make sure that you're taking advantage of all the areas and tax benefits that you can is, you know, I think is just extremely important. So uh, Isaac, I, unfortunately, I think we're out of time for the second episode, but I really want to thank you for just enlightening myself and our listeners on cost segregation studies, because again, it's something that just I've seen far too often real estate investors not be aware of. So I want to thank you for taking the time. And um, before we go, is there, your contact information. If somebody's listening to this and they're interested in learning more 
uh, how do they contact you? Yeah, absolutely. If you guys want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me directly. My telephone number is area code 805-341-0142. That number again is area code 805-341-0142. Or if you like, you can visit our website at capstantax.com. Or feel free to email me at idowning at capstan.com. That is I D O W N I N G at capstan, C A P S T A N tax.com. Excellent. Thanks so much, Isaac. Very much appreciate it. Thank you very much, Michael. Isaac, thank you again for being such a fantastic guest. Uh, Michael, I want to ask you, uh, you guys spoke about 1031 exchanges and you, you had a lot of information in this podcast. Um, if folks are interested in, and I know that we did a, you guys did a podcast on this quite a while ago on the 1031 exchanges, mm -hmm. but if people are interested in, in just having this conversation with you before they reach out to Isaac to, to see what their specific situation could call for, why don't you give them your contact information as well? So you can yeah, absolutely. take a look at the whole picture. Yep. You can call our office. It's area code 856-988-8300. You could always reach myself uh, or my father who's not with us today on social media. We, are, we both have LinkedIn that are uh, pretty active on, so you can always reach out to us there. Um, and our website address is www.cbfgllc.com. Fantastic. Michael, again, thank you so much for facilitating this and bringing Isaac to the forefront as your guest for the last two podcasts. These were both great podcast listeners. Go back and listen to one and then take some notes on two and, and make some phone calls. Again, guys, thank you so much. And of course, our last thank you goes to you listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Truth About Wealth podcast with Michael Paris. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when the gentlemen come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And we humbly ask that you share this podcast rate it and leave a review as this actually does help other people find the show again thank you so much for listening today for everyone at copper beach financial group this is eric johnson reminding you to live your best day every day and we'll see you next time thank you for listening to the truth about wealth podcast click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available the information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Copper Beach Financial Group. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. This material is for informational purposes only. Neither APFS nor its representatives provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. Please consult your own tax, legal, or accounting professional before making any decisions. Copper Beach is not affiliated with American Portfolios Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolios Advisors, Inc. Securities offered through American Portfolio Financial Services, Inc., a member of FINRA SIPC, Investment Advisory and Financial Planning Services offered through American Portfolio Advisors, Inc., an SCC Registered Investment Advisor. These opinions are subject to change at any time without notice. Any comments or postings are provided for informational purposes only and do not constitute an offer or a recommendation to buy or sell securities or other financial instruments. Readers should conduct their own review and exercise judgment prior to investing. Investments are not guaranteed, involve risk, and may result in a loss of principal. Past performance does not guarantee future results. Investments are not suitable for all types of investors. Copper Beach is an unaffiliated entity of American Portfolios Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolios Advisors, Inc. Any opinion expressed in this forum is not the opinions of American Portfolio Financial Services, Inc. and American Portfolio Advisors, Inc. and have not been reviewed by the firm for completeness or accuracy. Capstan, American Portfolios, and Copper Beach are unaffiliated entities.